we were forecasting. Zach, uh, you ready back there? Okay. It being a little bit past seven, I call the meeting to order. So moved. Can I have a sec uh, acceptance of the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Okay, we'll start with the uh, walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins? Yes, sir. Mr. Banger. Thank you very much, Al Banger, Director of Public Works. And I just want to give you just a quick um, heads up on the fact that we're all ready for winter. Um, we are prepared. All the routes are laid out. We have uh, increased the number of town employees and town vehicles involved in the snow fighting effort this year once again. At this point, uh, the water, sewer, uh, highway, grounds, and transfer station departments will all be involved in snow plowing. Uh, the, uh, we're going to go to a new mix this year. We're going to continue to do the pre-application of salt brine before the storm hits. And then we're going to go to a straight salt mix uh, following uh, as, as then we go out in, with our machinery. Uh, this means we won't be using a blend of sand and salt. We'll be going with straight salt, which will greatly improve spring cleanup, and it will actually be more effective on the highways than the salt-sand mix that we had in the past. One of the things driving it is that um, with uh, new federal standards coming along, cleanup of streets, the need to sweep sw the frequencies of cleaning streets, catch basins, et cetera, uh, is putting more and more pressure on not using things such as sand. So salt is more expensive than sand, but uh, Kevin Cafferty, the town engineer, negotiated with our salt supplier and was able to reduce the price of our salt from $60 to $48 a ton. So we've got a significant savings in salt, so we're looking at a very good operation there. What does sand cost? What does sand cost? About oh, about 11 bucks. So it's five times more expensive? Yeah, but we won't use, we don't salt. replace uh, sand ton for ton with salt, okay? So if we were putting down 100 a, a tons of the mix, we may very well put down only 50 tons of salt, okay? Because we're using a one-third salt, two-thirds sand. The result is uh, sand can actually uh, be deleterious as, as time goes on because what you do is you get a slurry on the road and instead of getting some grit action, you actually get a slurry action and, and have trouble. So uh, we're moving in that direction. Plus there's a cost for cleaning it up in the spring Absolutely. and the summer. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, the uh, streets and he, as you point out, the, the cost of cleaning it up is great and therefore it ties up the, sand, the uh, street sweeper excessively because at least one-third of the amount of time of street sweeping is going to empty the street sweeper. So if we're, in fact, sweeping up less uh, material, we can move down the roads and cover many more roads in a given uh, sweeping day. In addition, uh, we have to now pay to get rid of what we sweep up. It used to be we could dump it, and now, because of federal requirements, we have to dispose of it in a, in a, in a different manner. Right. So we're paying to get rid of it. So we're paying to bring it in, we're paying to get rid of it, we're paying to sweep it up, and it's not as effective as salt. The other factor this means is that uh, we're going to have uh, we're going to have to have more salt in town. Our salt barn is not large enough to keep us through uh, one and a half storms. So we're going to be using um, <coughs> Egypt Beach parking lot as a salt storage area. So we will have a pile of salt there. It'll be tarped. We'll have some security in that area so that we're we're not afraid of it walking away from us. Uh, but uh, that will enable us to get through any kind of storm situation without worrying about the salt supply, which in past winters has been a bit of a problem. The last thing I'd mentioned is that the transfer station, since we're involved, we got the big equipment at the transfer station we put on the roads to help with cleanup. Uh, the transfer station in the heaviest storms, we will close. Now, of course, during a heavy storm, people shouldn't be out anyway. And where we can, we'll maintain a skeleton crew, so if there are some incidental people showing up, that they'll be able to get in, it, provided we've, we've uh, cleared the transfer station of snow, but that's not our first priority. Our first priority is to be on the streets, clearing the streets so people can get to the transfer station and other places in town, okay? And that's, that's not that's not a snow day. That means while it's snowing. While we're snow fighting, right. right. So right. eventually, you know, it, it's usually blocks of time of- Yeah, usually eight, eight or 10 so hours. So it's more of a delay as opposed to a closing. Correct, and, it, and many times we're doing most of the work is in the middle of the night, and so that's when uh, we're generally snow fighting, and then uh, sometimes storms go on and on and on. We have to keep at it if that's the case and, uh, on that day. You'll know that it's a bad day because no one will want to be out anyway. John? 
Yeah. On another note, uh, I just wanted to say thanks to the groundskeepers and all the crew. Uh, they've been doing a wonderful job. Saw them today over cleaning up around uh, playground equipment. I, last week I saw them at the high school uh, picking up, and of course two weeks ago I saw them at the common. So, you know, thank them. You know, it's, it's a I'll thankless job, but I mean, highway. they're out there and they, they're doing a very good job. So it's noticed, believe thank it or you. not. So. Al, one more question. Did the, the ratio of, of town vehicles to contracted vehicles, does that continue to go down? Yes, it has. So, yeah. and have, as uh, you've passed. As, as we've been able to get uh, bigger, better equipment, and as we've been able to train our crews and cross rough everybody, uh, we now have um, uh, all of our large equipment will be, all of our new large equipment will be out with better equipped plows and sanding equipment. And it's just much less expensive. Much less expensive. Great. Thank okay. you, Al. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Um, any other walk-ins? Okay, we'll move on to item number three, which is a, a notice of public hearing. Uh, Town of Citro property setting uh, the residential factor and tax classification hearing. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, on behalf of the uh, Board of Assessors this evening, I'm Brian Sullivan, the Chairman of the Board of Assessors. With me is uh, Steve Jarzembowski, the Assessor, as I'm sure you no, Steve, he's uh, been in town hall for a couple of years now. And uh, we're here to... Uh, Brian, just one second. Just want to introduce the other... You guys don't get much face time, so the other people that... With good reason, but yeah. uh, thank you, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> There's, uh, I apologize. There's uh, Mr. Fred Avila to my right and to your left, and behind me is Mr. Steve Gard. Right. The three assessors. Thank Great. you very much. Um, anyway, uh, the uh, Board of Assessors this evening, uh, again... Uh, renew our request to the board that uh, that the board accept the uh, single tax rate this is a factor of one versus a split tax rate between residential and commercial which would be a factor of two so we're recommending a factor of one which would be the same rate across the board for both residential and commercial property it's the way it's always been and it's the way that uh, that most towns uh, on the south shore set their taxes explained in the past why that is and we're happy if to. If you just want to tell the people watching the percentage between the two. Sure. Um, the, um, the, the commercial uh, assessment, the average commercial assessment is about $688,000. The average residential assessment is about um, $478,000. And uh, if there were a split tax rate, it, what would happen is that the, the homeowner would realize a savings of about $14, but the commercial businesses in town would end up paying about $427 <coughs> more. And of course, they're in a for-profit business. They're going to pass that on to the consumers. So and my point was more the percentage of residential to percentage of, you know, it's 90, it's what is 96%, it, Steve? 96% yeah. is residential. It's, it's been that way for... So in towns like Braintree or other big commercial well, towns, Hanover, 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 it'd yeah. be a have yeah, a much bigger impact yeah, than our town of yeah you know if if uh, you know even Foxborough with Sullivan Good Stadium point. or whatever it's called now Gillette Stadium is um, that's still it's still a factor of one although if that casino is built that might might have to change because it would be such a large percentage would be commercial that they might have to have a factor of two but even even Foxborough is still a factor of one so unless we build a casino in situate so Hummerock Motion, Mr. Chairman. Now yeah. you're thinking. Uh, do you need a motion for the classification of one? Yes, move sir. to the Board of Selectmen vote to classify all the property of the town of Situate at one. Second. Second by Mr. Danny for you the discussion. You have a done yeah. that. Okay. Any discussion from the board? No. Yes, sir. Can I ask a question? Yeah, if you come up and tell us your name and where you live. Yeah. Joe, Joe just, Gibbons, two, you can two, pull three. the mic right over there so you don't have to lean over. Joe Gibbons, 223 Gannett Road. I just wanted to ask the selectman and the administrator what percentage the recent override, um, what percentage of the tax rate is directly attributable to the override that was passed last year? Well, the, uh, the previous tax rate for fiscal year 2011 was $11.25 per thousand, <coughs> and the new tax rate will be going up to $12.34 per thousand. And just in terms of where that puts us, we're still the lowest on the South Shore. Um, we're just about the lowest. We're one of the lowest. I've got the uh, tax rates 
fiscal year 2010, Braintree was, which again is a factor too, Braintree was 967 per thousand, but just about every other town on the South Shore was below where we were, and that, that remains the case. And in terms of the split, Steve? I, I can uh, answer Joe's question. Um, without the override, the numbers that we looked at were approximately 1168 per thousand. So that would mean that um, 66 cents about is the override portion of our tax rate. So the effect, on the, the effect on the typical homeowner, a property that's assessed at five hundred thousand dollars, what what are we talking in, in tax dollars? We're talking uh, five hundred times about sixty-five cents. Yeah, three hundred some odd dollars. Three hundred dollars a year. Three twenty-five. Okay, so about three hundred dollars of that increase that a lot of people are going to see are directly attributable. To an operational override that was passed this past year. Yes. And and in this town, in this town, we have aging buildings. We just passed an operational override that is going to be with us ad infinitum. And at the expense of taking care of buildings like the town hall, the junior high, that in my opinion have been neglected for years. And we passed an operational override. Well, Joe, obviously we can't undo time. That that's done, and if you right, if you know, let me forward, finish. I'm a let me finish. History. Yep, let me finish. Yeah. Part of the override that's going to occur, the selectmen and the board here is has allocated almost five hundred thousand dollars of that override to improving the roads, the buildings, the seawalls of town. Yeah, I understand that, and I agree with that. But I think your your, your problem there is, wouldn't it have been better to do that as a debt exclusion? where you pay it off in five years or 10 years and you're not stuck with it and override is with us forever. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's, it's a little bit, uh, I've let you go on even though it's off topic of what we're talking about well, here, I but I don't but, think it is. Well, I do. So, but so where do you want to, where do you want to go with this? What's your, what's your question? My question is, I, I'm looking at, I, I'm, People are looking at are going to be looking at tax bills, okay? And they're going to see that an override was just passed, and that three hundred dollars is going to the override. Right. Yet, in the last five years here, we have not increased the overlay one dollar. If you go back to fiscal 06, since fiscal 06, the overlay has been two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. When you have overrides, you get more appeals. When you get more appeals, you need more in the allowance for abatements and exemptions to cover those appeals. And I think it's very important that the public and the Board of Selectmen understand that the assessor's job is very difficult in that regard. That overlay is staying at $250,000, yet I can guarantee you, you're going to get more appeals this year than, than, than you have Be, because you pa because we passed an operational override. Right. That, I mean, that's your assumption, and unfortunately, that's not actually accurate. The, the, over, the overlay is going down this year in our fiscal year 2013 budget. So the amount of appeals and the overlay uh, money that we've put in has been more than enough to cover um, the, the, the appeals that come before the town. But that's not the point. The, the point, there should be more in there going forward when you well, pass we looked at the financial. The financial team looks at it and figures out what the accurate number is for this. The assessor is involved in it. The town administrator is involved with it. And we come up with a number. And we've been pretty good for the last and, and 375 ask, what years. Is that proposed what is that proposed number for the um, allowance for abatements and exemptions that's going to go on the recap sheet? For what year? For fiscal 12. It's 250 for 12. For 13, it'll probably go down a little bit in the forecast. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. As you were. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gibbons. Um, <clears throat> he's correct that it's uh, not an easy job being an assessor, but uh, we're, we're, I think we're very fortunate to have Steve, who's right on top of things. And, uh, and despite the fact that you know, frequently we get abatement applications. Our record in front of the appellate tax board is, is remarkable that we rarely, if ever, lose because we do things right. That's good to know. And Tricia says that all the time, that we have one of the best assessors in the state working for us. So great job, Steve. 
do the motion. Is there, do we need another motion? Or are we, we done? Did, we did it. We did the we motion. motion. Oh, oh, we never. I got you. All right, thanks. So we we'll like. Uh, so we have a second. A motion yep. and a second. All yep. in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Four zero. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you guys for coming in. Happy holidays. Happy Christmas to you all. Okay, we'll move on to item number four, which is a continuation of um, an item we talked about last week um, with an emergency sewer hookup. Our hopes was that you wouldn't be before us right now. Um, I think the way we left it was that um, that you would uh, try and get some sort of resolution with uh, the DPW department and not have to come back before us, but I assume that that hasn't been done yet, so here we are. Give you the update what's happened since last week the dpw was able to meet with me yesterday on this project um, and i did meet with them i think we have come to resolution um, basically what we did is we analyzed the three different options for connection of the property 27 captain pierce road um, and the alternative that is uh, i'll let al speak with the alternative that is supported by the dpw is running our own private spaghetti line in excess of 500 feet up the edge of Captain Pierce Road, bypassing the town system, bypassing Carnes Leah, and tying into the sewer manhole up on Tilden Road. Uh, it appears that we can do a majority of the work outside of the pavement, within the right of way, but outside the pavement. Uh, there is a portion where we will be within the pavement as we go around the Carnes Leah Lane intersection, and then as we're cutting into Tilden Road to access that manhole. Uh, I guess the second reason why we're here is to get permission from the selectmen to do this work as expeditiously as possible as we're beyond the street opening permit deadline. Um, you know, I still, I still believe the weather is in our favor and that we can still get asphalt and repair the road sufficiently where we are cutting into it to perform this work. Um, I, I just may be a little naive. What are you digging into going up Captain Pierce if it's not the asphalt? It is the asphalt um, in two locations. It's when we when we're coming up Captain Pierce. Right, right there. What are you digging into? Before, I understand when you cross the street you are, but what do you prior to the house what, right what's there? Are you, right is in it? here. Yeah. Out, outside the asphalt, there's probably an eight foot grass strip. You know, before you get to the edge of the road. So you're going up the grass strip in front of everybody how everybody's house. Exactly. you got to remember, the, the, the center of the road, the roadway itself, in and of itself, is not the layout of the road. It's, it's beyond that. It's, I forget the exact terminology, but it's like, so it, in other words, they're going in the town right of way. And so that's what you're cutting into. It's not private property. You're not going in anybody private property's right. rights. Their, their driveways go over the public way. Sean? <clears throat> My only concern is when how quick could this stop because we've been so fortunate with the weather it's going to turn any day do we jennifer do you know that if, if you know if everyone's weather, on no. board no no, no. no. <laughs> when can when can the contractor start it's already dig safe so okay yeah it's already been marked out um, as far as i know pete spencer is going to be doing the work for the homeowner and he's basically awaiting approval okay. to begin so i expect it'll be either later this week beginning next week in meeting with dpw yesterday i think we have agreed that in the areas within the, the street pavement you know, we'll pave those <coughs> we uh, will be responsible during the construction of the line for any plowing of the disturbed area during construction of that um, so i think i think there is potential to get it in hopefully before this weather turns bad joe wants to ask you a question about the betterment <laughs> the betterment uh you reach agreement on that 18000 or whatever? Well, the, the, client, the, the client is willing to, the client is fairly willing to pay that. The, uh, uh, willing to talk later about how that's executed. There's, there's some issues around betterments that I, it, it, I think we might be better to stay away from the whole betterment area. We've not applied betterments uh, to this kind of situation in the past. It's, uh, the use of a betterment isn't really applicable here. Because we're not doing the work. We're not creating a betterment. So you're saying that we're not charging uh, in this situation the same thing that we charge the people on no town? for the town because the town's not doing the construction. You know, a betterment is when the town, uh, you, can, uh, you can elect to establish a fee, a fee, okay? But a 
betterment very specifically is when town does work that betters a specific property, then the town recovers its costs. In this case, the town is not involved in the construction at all. But the town is allowed in, in the t involved in allowing yeah. the tie-in, which... There's a fee there, though, right? Yes. There's a there's fee. A fee. How much is that fee? Whatever. I mean, what is, I mean, is it... Well, there, well, does anyone pay, ever pay that fee? There's a $5,000 <coughs> fee to connect to the sewer. Okay. Okay. Um, there is a uh, minor fee, 125 to do the, to open the road. If they open a, a, for it. a, a road that's been, a moratorium road, there's an additional $5,000 for that, which we're going to, we prefer, and they would prefer to avoid uh, going through a recently paved street. Um, and then there's the cost of the actual E1 pump, which is probably, Greg, what, uh, $2,000 for the pump, the pump insulation at the property, and the insulation of that is another couple thousand dollars. And then going up the street is, what, five, six, eight thousand dollars. This this total connection here, we're expecting the homeowner to spend about $30,000 on this connection. Um, and that, you know, that includes the $5,000 connection fee uh, for the manhole to the road. Thank you. Thank you. I only have one question. Why, why is it that there, um, we're having the spaghetti line go all the way up to um, Tilden when Carnes Leah, the, the, the actual sewer's connected there and, and then c turns right up Pierce Road, right? Yeah, uh, why, why would you go are, that way? Yes, there are several other connections on, on that street, private lines put in already. Um, Carnes Lee was put in as a betterment, paid for by the people on Carnes Lee's Rosalinda and Newfield. They've all, they have paid for all of that work from the intersection on down. That betterment was applied to their properties. Uh, there's, you know, the, uh, the the DPW line that was put in there that we've had some problems with. It's a private line. It's not a public line. In other words, we don't have public sewage on that street. We're not declaring because the Carnsley line is <laughs> not a public line. So in other words, the reason is, I'm just asking because yeah. it makes better, it seems to make sense that if you're going to tap in, why would you go up further and have basically two sister lines going side by side as opposed to connecting it is it because if you connect it to Carnslea that or Carnslea what how do you say it Carnslea Carnslea Carnslea, Carnslea. 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 <coughs> in other words that um, then everybody else along the way would then be able to say we're going to tap into it and then get the benefit of of saying there's a betterment and then they could they, right. they could use the, the the statute to the statute to be able to do it but if you keep a spaghetti line, then I got you. All right. So, all right. so that makes sense. And the spaghetti line, what happens with the spaghetti line is that the spaghetti line remains a, remains a private line and is a responsibility of the homeowner to maintain, as opposed to when it becomes public sewage, then the town takes over responsibility for maintenance of it. Well, let me ask you this, and I'm sorry. It's just kind of fun to deal with this. Assume for the sake of argument, God bless, that you're going to go in another five or ten years that we make it a public sewer and we do a betterment right down um, Captain Pierce all the way down to the um, DPW then you're still going to have these spaghetti lines there with stubs out there people will be charged the betterment towards it whether they connect or not it's up to them here's what happens and this happened in the Carnsley area there was a homeowner on the corner of Carnsley and Rose's Lane who had a spaghetti failed system the homeowner uh, got permission for an emergency connection up through several backyards and into Tilden, to the area, to the Tilden line. That uh, that homeowner got permission to do that, uh, promptly sold the house, and then the new homeowner did the installation. Uh, five years expire, and now we come along and finally put in this, uh, this uh, section of sewage for these for these people permitted by the DEP, and and we credited the homeowner with the private line for the sewer connection. Gotcha, and okay. we provided him a new pump, I think. So That's fair. Uh, that, that is historically what's happened when sewage comes to an area. Uh, there's also several areas up on Hadley that have private sewage put in for emergency reasons in the past. They will get credited for their sewer connection. Okay. It's the same as if you put in, as has happened in Minot, a number of homes along Hadley have put in recently Title V systems, yep. paid much money for Title V systems. Now the sewer comes along, you know, they're... Uh, Some credit allowed. Well, they're not credited. They're, 
uh, out of luck. Yeah, out of luck. Okay. So, uh, Al, wasn't there a house of, and vinyl a couple of years ago that falls in the same category? We gave an emergency and yes. And, uh, and it upped up the bill and actually sold too. Two days later, the sign went up for yeah. sale. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It happens. Sean, doesn't it? Wouldn't it be, <coughs> you know, from what John said, wouldn't it be a better installation if it did tie in? To Consley at the intersection of Consley and Captain Pierce, um, and then and I agree something would have to be done where that homeowner they're going to save some money, but they would, you know, they rightfully should so should somehow pay into something to help those other 27 homes that had to pay. I just think down the road it's Alan, it's got to be a cleaner job just to tie into that if it could. No, right. Oh, right. I, I remember. Right. And then uh, those costs are, those actual costs are divided up by the number of homeowners and assessed to the homeowners. Some have paid their betterment already and moved. Right. Right. Uh, a couple have moved. Some have paid their betterment. Some have put their betterment over the 20 year period. Okay. So now, to, the law doesn't allow us to collect a betterment in this situation unless we've done the work, but then how do we reimburse the people who pay, you know? Yeah, you couldn't. Yeah. yeah that would, yeah, I mean, that part would be, but. Construction-wise, I all right. It's and that's fine. It gets it done. It's, it's, it's our it's the DPW's preferred method, and then eventually, when sewage comes in this area, right. Guess what? It doesn't even go in that direction. All goes downhill. Right. It goes reverses. The railroad right. tracks connects to the railroad tracks and heads on out. So. Right. So if the DPW did the work and connected it to Carnsley, could they assess the full betterment, or would it only be the cost of getting it to that spot? Well, we would assess the betterment, but then we would reimburse all the uh, people on the streets because they paid their betterment. I mean, they paid, this is their line if you look at it. They paid for everything from building he's up. Talk, he's talking about, forget Carnsley, oh. he's talking about on, on, on Captain Pierce. If you connect Captain Pierce all the way down to the tracks where the pipe is, and could we assess an abetterment for everybody on Captain That's Pierce? It. Yes. Well, uh, I assume... A lot of permitting issues that go right. into Well, I assume that there's a sewer on Tilden, right? The sewer uh, to that man And somebody... Tilden. Somebody paid a betterment to put that in, right? It's a gravity line that heads that way, yeah. But somebody paid a betterment. Years ago, right? 20 years ago. 20 years ago, and then we, Carnsley tapped into that, right? Yeah. So those people didn't, we didn't refund the other houses, the betterment well, thing. Like, yeah, after, after the betterment expires, there's, there ain't no, uh, I don't know how that plan was presented to the betterment. I don't recall, I thought that was done with years ago in the 70s with Justinio or Geneva Construction when they did Egypt Beach area. Joe, no? I don't remember. I, but <clears throat> it was a while ago. Well, well, I don't know. What, I think one thing that they, they need to ask permission for is that the, 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 there's now a moratorium on opening streets. The, literally, the, the plant, the, the last paving plants are shutting down. There's one that's left open for emergency purposes. So we cut off opening streets from November 15th to April 15th, right. okay? And we get a lot of pressure uh, to allow us to open. So let me open the street, there's one more thing I need to do, one more thing we need to do. And we do that for emergencies such as the gas line leaks that have happened on, uh, the, the gas company found out on Brook Street. Um, and uh, we understand the urgency of the, uh, Mr. Morris's uh, client here to get this project put in place. Uh, and we said that if he would have to ask for an exception from you for the street opening moratorium, and we would uh, go along with that. Sorry. Motion for that. So, well, why don't we have? Uh, sure, go ahead. And A move that the the board make an exception in this uh, in this case for a street opening permit. Second. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Danny. Further discussion. So. Obviously, the other alternative is just to tell these people to wait until April and have them pump. They pumped it every two months. They could pump it every two months until then and do it the other way. Now, I guess my question is, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting, my question is, if in April we ask them to do that, we say, okay, get through the next six months, are you going to do the same thing? Are you going to tell them to take a spaghetti line and hook it up to? You are. 
Okay, so, so it doesn't matter. I just have one question. And this, <coughs> this might have been answered at the last meeting. The urgency is the sewage coming up, backing up into the house, and no, that's the urgency. And one, one final question. Has anyone from the town, Jennifer, seen the sewage backing up into the house? No. I, I walked over it. It's very soggy. So, so you've seen sewage, Frank, in the house? Yeah. It, no, I didn't go in the house. I did what went out into the, you know, the yard where is you a see mess. the picture. The yard is yeah. soggy like any. I'm sure we've all walked through a, a cesspool. Okay. That's, that's, that's that's <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Um, the, I guess the, the other question I have is, is that even an option? If we say, look, pump it every month, is that still putting them at risk of sewage going in there? If they did it every month, it wouldn't be a problem. You can't tell when it's going to back up. It's a function of the weather and the water use. Right. You get a bad rain, then the rain's in. using the, the space rather than the sewage. And right. Okay. And uh, John, just how soon can peak get started before the holidays? I mean, I'm asking that because I'm like, you know, it seems like the weather will turn within a week or two, or sometimes right after Christmas. So it's like, you know, if he can get started sooner, the better. And, and I'd like to be able to say put in limitation to have it done before Christmas. Not to try to hamstring you, but at least to try to tell P get started on it because it's important. I think that would be fine. I know it's, it's on the <coughs> agenda for <coughs> as soon as possible. Sean, did you have anything or nope, any no further discussion? So we're all kind of in favor of? Kind of. All right, so no. Uh, OK, <laughs> then if, if we are, so you don't need, Sorry. so we need to Vote. We are. So we started a vote to open up the road. Do we also need to vote to assess the, the fee, or that just happens automatically? So all we have to do is vote to allow them to open up the road, and then it's a done deal. Uh, because I believe you voted last. Excuse me. Right. Okay. So I have a, a um, motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye I guess it's uh, unanimous. Uh, and one one quick thing, Kevin. Um, so do we have to vote? I know we did it tentatively last week. Do we have to vote again? No. So, so the emergency hookup is fine. Yeah. Kevin. I still request to get a fee open permit, obviously, so we get the bond in place. And decide to you want to do that? <coughs> Thank you, guys. Well, thank Excuse you. me. Good thank luck. You. Get it done quickly. Thank you. Moving on to item number five, discussion of the annual license renewals. Um, just run down the list, Tony, and then a motion run down the list, and then we get yeah. voting. Before we start on this, um, this isn't this isn't the um, Hawker's Peddlers or the um, Hawker, no, the uh, Hawker's Peddlers. Hawker's Peddlers. No. No, it is not. Okay, because that, that's going to come into this whole plan. This is just the CV license, the common picket license, and the other ones in town. Okay. Great. Sean, did you want to run I'll, I'll start, sure. Okay. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following common victuals licenses for 2012? Sissios Grotto, Grotto, Dad's Place, Dribbles, Driftway Donuts, Egypt Country Store, Harbor Donuts, Harbor House of Pizza, Hennessy News, Sam's on the Harbor, Maria's Subs and Pizzas, Inc., Mary Lou's News, Morning Glory's Bakery, Reva's Pizzeria, South Shore Cinemas, The Silent Chef, Wilbur's North. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. 4-0. The next one. Joe. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following septic disposal license for 2012, All Town, Inc., K.R. Anderson Pumping, Joseph Bonomi III, Rosanna Davis Sanitary Pumping, P.F. Spencer Jr. Inc., and Spirito Environmental Services Inc. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. John? Move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following Class II licenses for 2012. Seacrest Auto, Driftway <coughs> Auto Inc., McBrien's Diagnostic Repair, and Automotive Depot. Take that. Second. Second by Mr. Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. The next one, Class Three license. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following Class Three license for 2012 Ryan Allen LLC and Ray's Repair Shop. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Stay. 
One abstain. That's 3-0 with one abstaining. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the bowling and electronic games licenses for the Satuath Bowl away for the year 2012? Second. Second by Mr. Danahy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Janus, 4-0. And <coughs> lastly, move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the movie theater license for South Shore Cinema or Cinemas for 2012. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Great. <coughs> Number six is a discussion of uh, opening the annual town meeting warrant. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to open the April 9th, 2012 annual town meeting warrant at 7.40 p.m. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, let the budget begin, right? Um, the town <coughs> administrator's report, item number seven. Town administrator has no report. No report. She had a large one last week. Um, next uh, item, item number eight is other business. Does anyone have any other business? Nope. nope. Two things, unless are you can talk. Well, what Saturday. I was gonna, but you Good. Uh, no, the only thing I was going to say is, you know, many people probably have been driving around the roundabout. And uh, yesterday I was driving around the roundabout, and to my great surprise, there happened to be a Christmas tree put in the middle of it with uh, red bows. And um, thought to myself, my goodness, I can't imagine the state of Massachusetts, the highway department, would come down here and do that. And they didn't. So obviously there's either a person or persons who decided on their own to uh, put up a Christmas tree <coughs> in the roundabout. And I just want to say, you know, that's great. And it's, that's what makes this town really special and nice. And uh, whoever did it, um, thanks. That's, that's, that's fabulous. And uh, that makes your town much better. So I commend whoever he or she is or who or they are. But good job. So that's all. Right. Um, I guess uh, John was going to mention this as well, and uh, we all will. Uh, last Saturday um, was <coughs> the Santa Stroll, and actually last Friday night was the first night in uh, in the harbor, which was a great turnout for the for the um, merchants down there. Um, I've been going to the Santa Stroll for uh, I guess 14 years, and um, this was by far the largest turnout I've seen. Um, there must have been just under a thousand people. I mean, the pier was full. And it backed up across the street. The police department did a great job. The fire department did a great job. The harbor master did a great job. Uh, Santa somehow got on a boat and made it into the harbor and circled around, um, walked up at low tide, up a, a plank that must have been at, what would you say, Joe? Uh, you know, it was steep. A steep the Santa steep told me very steep. Degree. And, uh, and said hello to hundreds of kids right at the pier before he got uh, driven over to um, the community building at Pier 44, where it was just packed for two hours with events. You know, Community Christmas puts this on, where there's uh, arts and crafts, making cookies, get your photo taken with Santa. The line was out the building, and um, Santa stayed there for every single one, got a smiling picture with every single one, and then um, it was just a great event, a great place to have it. People were able to walk down there, which was great. And uh, I think it was just a very well-run event, and it was uh, great for the community. Um, I don't know, anything just, to add? Anybody? Just one little thing to add, and, and, and everything Tony mentioned was, was free of charge, mm -hmm. uh, and it's Citra Community's Christmas way of just giving back something uh, to the community, and that's all too rare in these days. Uh, so it, it, it was a great event, and as I say, it was just a way of Citra Community Christmas thanking the community for their support over the years. So, thank you. Great. Um, I don't have any other business. Any, any other comments? Great. Um, correspondence? I don't see any. None. And uh, I, what we're going to do now is move into executive session to discuss the uh, exchange lease of uh, value of real estate property or labor negotiations. We're, we're, we're coming back, though, before, uh, not next week, but the week after, right, Kim? Yeah. The 20th of December. Perfect. Good. Good. Yep. We're not going to come back into session after executive session, though. So, um, yes, please. Yes. 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 Good night, folks. Thanks, Zach. Good night. Thanks, Zach.